presentations, um, but it was great to learn what other states have been doing, um, where there have been leaders um, in other places and what we still have yet to do. They did a great job of laying out um, the issues that are left open that still have a lot of work to be done. So I, I really um, applaud the NCSL staff for um, recruiting those presenters. Well said. Anyone else? For any of our phone participants, it's star six to unmute yourself and star six to remute yourself. I see that we do have two people who have dialed in. Okay, uh, hearing none, I'd say that the, the week was a success. There, there wasn't any, any sort of corrective feedback there at all from the group, so well done. Um, the next thing I'd like to, to review is the purpose and goals of the work group itself. Uh, with the rise of the data economy, policymakers uh, are considering the implications of data privacy policies on business and society. That is certainly true here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, the growth of internet, mobile and social network connectivity has greatly increased the amount uh, of personally identifiable information that consumers generate and share with companies and with the government. Uh, with new laws and the passage of GDPR, uh, businesses and governments are required to adjust to a more complex regulatory scheme. I'll say for starters that uh, I would love for Kentucky to adopt what uh, Assemblywoman Irwin has done there in California if we could manage to get it passed, just as a, as a place to start. Uh, NCSL is a policy leader in data privacy at the state and federal level. And in August of last year, NCSL adopted a new directive on data privacy to ensure regular and meaningful consultation between states and federal lawmakers uh, as Congress attempts to draft federal data privacy legislation. NCSL continue to play a major role in guiding the states on principles to consider when crafting privacy policies to protect consumers and create clear standards for third parties. And to that end, this privacy work group was formed as a subcommittee of the Cybersecurity Task Force. And this privacy work group will examine policy issues, including consumer data privacy, uh, algorithms, government data usage, transparency, big data, uh, law enforcement issues, and intersections between data privacy and cybersecurity. And there are a few of those. Uh, the group will also produce a series of work products to help guide lawmakers around the country considering privacy legislation. Uh, what are your all's thoughts on that? Uh, I'll tell you, as, as I mentioned, I'll volunteer that I'd love for Kentucky to, to adopt something. We're behind. We, we've got nothing in Kentucky on consumer uh, data protection. There's a, a weak sauce sort of milk toast uh, data breach notification, but that's as, that's as friendly to consumers as Kentucky law has ever gotten. Uh, and it's still pretty weak. Uh, so my hope is that we can adopt something that's much more broad because Congress sure isn't going to do anything about it. Uh, at least not anytime soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to the work of this group. I'm, I'm really thankful uh, for the NCSL staff and putting these different products out there and uh, this research that they do, this policy work uh, that they do to inform me and the rest of us as we consider what in the world we can do because the data economy is booming uh, and is not obviously not ever going to go away. Um, and consumers are paying the price for that. To be so bold as to say that, uh, whether they know it or, or care to or not. So, what, are, what, what says the group? Can I go ahead and jump in here? Yeah, please feel free. Hey, this is uh, Rep. DeGrazia out of Arizona. So we tried to pass a, uh, a pretty comprehensive data privacy law, something similar to what uh, Washington State was working on. And of course, there's there's little appetite out here. There's a lot of education. Um, but one of the interesting um, I, I, interesting parts about the list that you just went through is um, making sure that states can uh, interlock the privacy laws that might be made, and that we also interlock with the federal government. Um, and just keep it in mind that we're all kind of pushing in the same direction to protect consumers. Um, so yeah, it's a heck of a task. You got a lot of a lot of big items on there, but I'm looking forward to it. I think we can turn out some good product. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Is there anything that we haven't included on this list you think we ought to? So I think the rep is pretty on the nose there. This is this is a lot to tackle, and there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of policy work to dig into in all of in any one or two of these, not to mention the whole list. This is a uh, representative Steve Meeks from uh, Arkansas. Go ahead. Uh, one thing that we might consider a law that I passed uh, here in our state is dealing with the intersection of uh, technology and humanity. And in my case, um, I passed a law regarding uh, human microchipping. Um, that's a technology that's coming. And uh, of course, there's a lot of concern over And we lost just how yeah, so just just food for thought as we go down this road we we lost part of that uh representative um audio cut out there for a bit we we got the microchipping right uh if you if you can still hear me i i live in a rural area so my internet's not the best um but what i was saying Feel is as we go down this road that uh as uh technology begins to integrate with uh, humanity and uh, on, uh, you know, laws regarding the, the event, just food for thought that we consider that as we go forward. I appreciate it. Um, we, we lost a little bit of that again, but that reminds me from this, this for everybody in the meeting, if it's, if it's something we either don't hear or you don't want to say out loud in front of the group, feel free to always email uh, any of the folks with the NCSL team uh, or email Assemblyman Woman Irwin uh, or Senator Alexander, uh, the co-chairs, feel free to share any other suggestions or comments uh, offline that way that you wish to. Any other thoughts or suggestions from the group? Representative Hudgens, I see in the chat, has a comment. Fire away, Representative. Uh, thank you very much. Um, out here in Washington State, we uh, very similar to California, two years of big uh, discussion around privacy issues. Uh, two things to note um, from that. I mean, there's a huge discussion, but two things. One is uh, the discussion about enforcement became very key to that discussion about whether consumers um, can enforce those rights or not, or when should they be able to, right, like two years or five years, because it's uh, a lot of new stuff, um, or whether only the attorney generals should enforce. Um, and so some would characterize that as a private right of action or not, or consumer focused yeah. or presumptions. So large discussion there about enforcement. Second piece was around facial recognition software and the privacy implications about that and how um, that intersects with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, notification and bias. Uh, so th that was a second piece of that privacy discussion that was really, really large in our state. Um, and we've seen some of the providers um, especially during the, um, the, the racial reckoning we're having in our country, uh, focus on not selling, for example, to law enforcement right now and making sure there's some outside studies. So uh, facial rec and uh, enforcement are two things in this privacy sector that we found in Washington State uh, are, are difficult to work out. I mean, I think that there's a path um, and we're working on that now, but uh, folks should keep that in mind and maybe that's a good place for discussion here. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, and uh, Abby put in the chat just now to, to remind everybody, everyone to check out the recording of the facial recognition and biometrics webinar from yesterday uh, online uh, on NCSL's site. Be sure to check that out. Uh, I think that very well taken, uh, that suggestion. We've got uh, I, the things that cross my mind and and I don't know that it needs to be listed, but each one of these has some element, element in my mind about consumers' access to it, uh, how long records are kept, how long, what is kept, how long it's kept, uh, who has the right to delete it, 
uh, the private cause of action is a sticking point. That liability questionnaire is a big sticking point when it's come up in Kentucky, when we've tried various versions of privacy data related legislation in the past. Uh, so I think that's all uh, very worthwhile. Anybody else? Rep, this is a uh, Senator, is it Rep or Senator w Westerfield? Senator or just Whitney. <laughs> I'll, call you, I'll call you Senator. So this is uh, Senator Lou De Palma from Rhode Island. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just, I, was, I, was, I would have commented earlier, but I went and checked online on my other computer here. And uh, obviously we had an abbreviated session this year. Uh, and maybe most of right. you had, or some of you have, I'm not certain everybody had as abbreviated as we did, but uh, our house, uh, Rep Shanley on our house, he had a commission that finished last year. I don't think he had a bill last year, but the Rhode Island Data Trans Transparency and Privacy Protection Act. Uh, I think it was probably patterned after uh, what California had done, I think. Uh, Representative Uchi, who would be a part of us here, uh, still a rep, but he's not running uh, uh, next year. He chose to uh, retire. He's very young but he, to retire, but uh, that bill exists. In fact, I'm trying to text him now. I don't, think, I don't believe we had a Senate companion. And on our Senate side, we had a different bill uh, that's not the same as that. I'm not certain where it came from. Uh, so the, both House and Senate are looking at things. When we go back in January, I'll be going back in January. I'm fortunate not to have a... Uh, Challenger in November. So unless there's a big right. Sorry, we're going to have to mute you at this point. I'm sorry. Uh, all, all unopposed legislators are barred from talking sorry. anymore in this meeting. Lou, no, I'm no, sorry. No, no primary either. So no, neither here nor there. Uh, Kick him out of the meeting. We got to go past mute. Come on, Susan, Abby, somebody, help me out here. What can I tell you? Uh, yeah. So unless there's a big writing campaign. Or, I'll be connecting with the representative Shanley from our house, who I think is coming back. I'm not certain if he has a challenger or not on the house side, uh, but I expect he wins. We'll, we'll look like we'll be introducing something in Rhode Island next year as well. I, I appreciate you sharing. I'd, I'd be interested to read uh, sure. that Rhode Island uh, house bill. You said it was filed this year by that representative? It was. In fact, I will, uh, I will get your you email. You got a link, drop it in the chat. I will, I will do that. Good uh, man, all right. Yeah, I'll try to do that. I have, I have, I got two computers going plus my iPhone, so we'll figure this out. That's that's the running meetings in the age of COVID. Anybody else have anything else they want to add here before we move on? Thoughts, so, suggestions. Katie Sullivan, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Katie from Montana, I'm House District eighty nine. Um, in my, I'm coming into my second term, and I'm just thankful that we have this group. I appreciate being included. And I really look forward to having a group of people that I can uh, reach out to and work with on these important topics. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, seeing, hearing none, seeing none. Uh, I want to point out, and I've, I've already made reference to this, and the, the staff is always good at reminding us of this, but I want to point out the, the great resources the NCSL team already has on privacy and data security. Uh, you can find all those links in the chat. Uh, NCSL tracks state and federal legislative proposals on privacy and cybersecurity. I suspect that Rhode Island bill is probably on their radar. Um, they Obviously, we all know this. They provide all of us legislators with opportunities to advocate for state leadership uh, on privacy to Congress and the administration. Uh, and we encourage you, all of us encourage you to reach out to Abby, Susan, uh, or the rest of the team if you're interested in getting more involved with NCSL's federal advocacy on privacy and cybersecurity issues. As soon as Mitch McConnell's done running for re-election, I'll be sure to reach out to him here in the bluegrass. Um, I don't know if I'll do any good, but I'll do it. Uh, I'd like to open up discussion now uh, about the work products of the work group. Uh, and I want to emphasize to my fellow lawmakers here on the, on the call the importance of ongoing engagement and communication with each other in this work group. Even though we're probably not going to be able to meet in person for a while, we rely and the group relies on all of us being responsive and sharing our expertise and our opinions with the group as the group and the staff works to develop the work product of this work group. Uh, it's important that any product of this group puts out uh, or any of the work product that is put out is a reflection of all of us uh, and our input uh, from our various roles across the, the United States. 
uh, with Congress continually failing to move any sort of federal privacy proposal, we're on the front lines here in the states, the, the laboratories of democracy. Uh, NCSL has long served as a forum for us legislators to work across state lines and to develop guidelines and guides for difficult policy issues. And we've got an opportunity to do the same thing here on privacy, and it's a whammy, uh, a big uh, As more states consider both comprehensive and limited, more narrow privacy proposals, there's a need uh, for guidance to lawmakers on the complex and legally challenging issues involved in regulating privacy. Uh, we've got a lot of options uh, for what you all think would be uh, most helpful for you uh, and all the rest of us fellow lawmakers, including best practices, statements of principle, discussion guides, surveys, white papers, region-specific guidance. Uh, we plan to start working on the first product soon and we'll have initial drafts for discussion at our December meeting. Uh, with that, I invite your feedback and suggestions on the work products of this work group. Then I'll make a comment that I made uh, a few times before. I know it's gonna sound like a broken record, but I feel obligated to make it every time at least once. Uh, it's still unconscionable that we need to do this in all the 50 states, territories, Puerto Rico, whatever. It's just, and I, Congressman Langevin, who is a congressman in the 2nd Congressional District in Rhode Island, not my congressman, but a good friend. Uh, and I'm doing, I'm hosting my fourth annual cyber hygiene event this year with uh, Congressman Langevin, somebody from the uh, feds, as well as Rhode Island State Police. We do every year for what people could do to uh, protect their data themselves, their family, their identity. It's un just unconscionable that Congress can't get out of their own way. Something as basic that we're gonna have 50 states doing 50 different things uh, is just it's hard on consumers. It's hard on the private sector. It's hard on everybody. Uh, yep. You are 100% correct. And the lobbyists, I know there's somebody, uh, somebody's here from uh, CTIA or whatever, and I value uh, what they come to the table. We have representatives in Rhode Island and we have conversations about what's there, what's not there. And whether it's the telecoms that come to the table, Verizon, AT&T, you name it. And they say, oh, we really can't do that. I was like, well, I know you can. I know you don't want to, but we need your help to push this at the national level because they're going to follow rules in 50 different states for, for people that might be in Rhode Islanders that might be living in Wisconsin. That's still Rhode Island data. you got to follow the Rhode Island law with Rhode Island data. So, Mr. Keegan with CTIA and, and all the others, I'm sure have thoughts on that. Feel free to speak up. I'm sure they do. I hope they do. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you, Senator De Palma. I really um, think Congress needs to act here. It's something that we are advocating for at the federal level, and we spend a whole host of time with other industries doing so. Mm -hmm. um, we are very worried about a patchwork of privacy laws in this space. Um, so know that we are advocating for that. We're spending a lot of time and resources doing so, um, and believe that we need a federal solution for once and for all. One last piece on that. And if we think about the, not the, data not the notification for data breach, right? Every state's different. I don't think any states are the same. Yeah. Maybe 30 days, 15 days, 10 days, who you tell, who you don't tell, who needs to be told first, second, third. And exceptions for when you don't have to tell. Exactly. And if, a Rhode Islander, if it's Rhode Island data and the Rhode Islander is in Wisconsin, which law do you follow? Yep. So I, whatever help you need at the federal level, it's... I'm willing to help you. So. Great, thank you. And, and you raise the exact issue here. The data breach notification framework in this country is broken. Um, it, Congress should have stepped in a decade ago after well over a decade ago. I mean, once California enacted its data breach notification law in 2001, Congress should have acted. Um, and we do not want the privacy framework in this country to reflect the data breach notification framework in the United States. Hey, Senator, it's Kevin Thompson with uh, Walmart. Yeah, Kevin. Go Following ahead. up on, uh, you, you're looking good, by the way. Glad the, glad the bike, <laughs> bike is paying off, man. Good, good for you. Um, uh, you know, following up on Senator De Palmer's point and, and Jerry's, you know, I think we're all aligned that what we don't want is 50 different rules. Uh, you know, if, if we look at, you know, there's obviously the federal piece, but, you know, if we look at what 
streamline how, you know, the streamlined sales tax project, NCSL's role in that, you know, over the last 15 years. While I'm not sure we could replicate that model here, I guess our interest is that there's some work product that, you know, we understand NCSL can't put the imprimata on sort of a, a model bill, but if there is some type of, you know, consistency and spirit that this group can put out as a work product so that, you know, states have some sort of, you know, guideposts um, that we could then, you know, advocate from to minimize, you know, the, the overlapping and the, you know, the dueling statutes. I mean, I think as everyone knows, if, if Rhode Island passes something stronger than California or Washington, that becomes the new de facto national standard, you know, vice versa, because you can't, you know, you can't write uh, an app or a website just for one state. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So that will be our interest. Appreciate it. I, I really appreciate uh, Kevin and, and uh, Mr. Keegan. I appreciate you both speaking up uh, and the Senator raising the point. Uh, we, we hopefully learn through that repetition, Senator. So keep bringing the, keep banging that drum. Uh, and I hope that you all, uh, those that are working with Congress and the NCSL staff, let us know. I, and I reached out to Abby last night. I, I shot you an email and said, what, what can I do? How can I plug in and get more involved in advocating with the Congress to, to do something? And I honestly, I don't know where the, where the, gridlock is on this issue. I don't know where the political buttons are. I can make assumptions and guesses, but I'd be curious to know what they are and, and which members I ought to be writing letters to or, or making calls to or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's in the meantime, though, I still think we don't have much of a choice but to try to do something on the state level, as frustrating as it is and as, as challenging as it makes the environment, because I and I'm going to speak for me, I worry about the consumers who are just giving out all this data uh, and really sacrificing themselves to that, that marketplace without sufficient protections, without awareness, uh, and without some requirements to make sure people know what is being shared and what control over it they have or don't. I just have concerns about that. I do. I won't speak for the group there. Uh, anybody else on work products of the work group? Sure, Senator Westerfield, this is Rick Zimmerman from NCTA. I wanted to jump sure. in less, less about work product than just sort of following up on the, the prior conversation and offer a slightly contrarian view, at least to your last point, maybe not to what was said before, because we certainly wholeheartedly believe in a national privacy framework and have worked closely with our friends at CTIA and Walmart. And you know, I think everyone that is represented here to try to make that happen. Um, so I want to say something about that, but then come back to the question of kind of a de facto national standard. So um, Representative Hudgens mentioned, uh, you know, enforcement and uh, as you did, the question of private right of action. And frankly, that is one of the key issues and elements that is uh, holding back federal action. There's probably two, gotcha. there's more, uh, but I think the two main ones are the question of preemption and the question of enforcement. And maybe, uh, you know, taking up Representative Hudgens on his, his suggestion or offer uh, that, you know, we explore enforcement uh, as part of the, uh, you know, the work of the task force and, you know, look at different models and regimes and whatever, uh, and, you know, see if that log jam can be broken. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, um, I don't work on the Hill per se, but I'm in the same department with all the people that work on the Hill at my organization and have way too many meetings about this, <laughs> much everything. Uh, but yes, and, uh, enforcement, private right of action, that is a huge, huge issue. But having said that, the, the contrarian part here is, and I know this will be deeply satis unsatisfying to all state legislators, is that our suggestion would be not to legislate. For this reason, California now, CCPA, is the de facto national standard. Now, granted, it only went into effect, you know, in July. Uh, you know, we're still digesting as, uh, I mean, all of my members are, you know, if not nationwide work in multiple states. Uh, and essentially what they have to do for California, they're doing for uh, every state. And, uh, you know, our uh, you know, our, our, our unwanted 
and roundly rejected advice uh, to folks is, you know, let, let us digest and live with California for a little bit before we start uh, tinkering because we, we've got to do California no matter what. So even if you legislate and it's less in Kentucky, we still got to do California. And if it's more, then that's worse from our perspective. So, uh, and, you know, believe me, and I know, I believe that Senator Irwin is gone, but I think Brandon, if I understood, is a uh, staffer for uh, Assembly Member Irwin. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is rare that I would say do what California does, but uh, <laughs> it, it, I'm not saying do what California does, but I am saying let's live with what California did because we don't really have a choice until we get a national privacy framework. So I'm sure I've upset pretty much everyone on the call now. No, 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 no. I appreciate the feedback. And I think as a practical matter, you're right. Uh, and for the reason that the, the senator mentioned, uh, the Palma, you, we, you can't, the, the, the people that, that make apps and services don't operate just in Kentucky or just in Rhode Island or just wherever. They, you do business in California, you're probably going to do business in the Commonwealth and elsewhere. So I understand that argument. I disagree with it, but I understand it. So I think it's the, uh, that was uh, Rick. I, Rick, I hear what you're saying, but it's just not going to happen. I, it, it's <laughs> under the, I'm just, I'm, all, I'm always going to be respectfully direct. I'm not going to tell you A and go do B. At the end of the day, uh, I, could, I have a constituent, a set of constituents that are looking for something. We're going to sure. do something. And guess what? Our data has got to be a little bit different. It doesn't need to be. But if Congress does something, you're going to end up with 50 different versions. Not 50, but. Senator Westerfield, if I could jump in, I have a suggestion. Yeah, for Brandon, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I think something that would be really useful for other state legislators who are looking at this topic and trying to craft something is potentially a comparative glossary of terms. One of the hardest things that has come about in discussions of um, our statute in California is what do the defined terms mean? What are their scope? What are we missing? Um, what might be over-inclusive in them? Um, many of the bills that Assemblywoman Irwin has carried have been purely modifying the definitional section of the CCPA. Um, so being able to have a glossary that can compare what is an existing law in many other states. So um, many states like to borrow from existing statute on their definitions of, let's say, what does aggregate mean? What does de-identified mean? Um, and see what kind of gap there is between that and other states. Um, if we are trying to make a more uniform approach um, across the 50 states in absence of congressional action. Um, and um, just to um, Rick's point about um, potentially um, living with the California law, uh, I do want to note for everybody, we do have a ballot initiative um, on our November ballot that significantly changes what California has already passed, um, including really? our definitions. Um, and so just keep an eye out on that, especially if you're working over this fall um, drafting legislation and in your own states and you're giving an eye towards California, um, our law may significantly change and include it in that and ballot initiative. If you don't mind, Brandon, in which direction is that ballot initiative wishing to change things? Um, a little bit in every direction um, to, to be very um, opaque about it. Um, the, the ballot um, initiative is supported <coughs> Um, proponent that initially wrote the CCPA and then the legislature negotiated with and created um, a legislative statute rather than a ballot initiative. Um, during his frustration with the legislature in the intervening two years, he negotiated with many stakeholders and took their suggestions, um, both from the pro-privacy group angle and also from the business community. So it's a little bit of a hodgepodge of everyone's top asks and they are um, contradictory in nature in many regards, um, expanding uh, enforcement in some areas, exempting certain industries and certain types of data in other areas. So it, it's not an easy um, kind of um, pro-privacy or pro-business um, initiative. And you see that in um, the, the lack of support um, from many of those traditional privacy groups and also the lack of support from industry. Um, for the ballot initiative. It is truly the proponent. Um, um, I'm not sure if I'm excited about that initiative or not. 
but it doesn't sound very good. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and one last point just um, for, for you to keep an eye on and um, why I think this comparative glossary might be a, a helpful tool um, in the next few years is that um, if that ballot initiative does pass, it has very strong language about amendment, um, tying the hands of the state legislature um, to essentially only by a supermajority uh, amend the initiative to be more pro-privacy. Um, so we will be very um, hamstrung to actually conform any of our definitions or conform any of our statutes to other states. Um, it will be very much set in stone. Um, so if there is an interest in trying to align with California, um, it will be important to match what is in that initiative if it's successful. Um, and it might change the um, conversation about whether or not congressional preemption is um, needed for other states um, if they are seeking a different type of definition or a different type of um, timeline or a structure to a privacy law. I think that, uh, having that, uh, that, trying to find a uniform glossary and, and a uniform way of defining the terms is a, is a good first step. That's a good suggestion. Anybody else? I don't see anybody else. Hey, hand hey, hi there. This is uh, Representative Capri Leone from the great state yeah. of Texas. How's everyone Go doing? Ahead, Representative. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to jump in, I guess, uh, first on, uh, first we were able to go and create a, a privacy protection council and have a lot of discussion amongst our members and stakeholders, which included industry and, and private sector about you know, privacy and privacy issues and looking what other states are doing. I guess what I would start with is saying that, you know, we have no belief whatsoever that the federal government is going to agree on, on, on anything for a very long time, right? So, so I think that's not really, if we really want to address the privacy issues that consumers are facing, it's not going to happen. I mean, the reality is, is there are 50 different types of breach notifications and for a reason, right? That, that there's, there's issues that come up. This is one of the more complicated issues that I don't think Congress will get to. And I don't necessarily have a problem. Well, ideally, uh, I think we would all be able to agree. Um, you know, like, but for instance, I hear California saying, well, we'll be fine with it so long as, you know, your definitions match our definitions and your ideas match our ideas. Um, what, what I think we all got to keep in mind is what can we get accomplished in the next year or the next two years to go and, and actually provide these benefits. What I've seen over uh, just, just actually the last few months is there have been a lot of lawsuits, there's been a lot of activity more related to antitrust issues, right? Rather large companies are now monopolizing the data, right? Because what we can keep in mind is it's not just, hey, we don't want people to have your data. What's happened, and, and I would say California's uh, uh, legislation actually helped do that to some bit, is it's, it's essentially created one or two or three uh, large companies in particular that have, have control of this information for advertising, marketing, and other purposes. So, you know, one of the things that we're going to be looking at here is um, not only has our attorney general been part of that antitrust suit, but there have been lawsuits all over the country. I know in Arizona and other places when, when companies haven't for instance, even they violated their own terms of agreement. So there's, I think, a lot of low hanging fruit, uh, you know, certain types of malfeasance or, or industries that are acting out of step with common norms or even what their industry coalition said that we can tackle. We can look at these lawsuits and say, you know what, if you say that your, your privacy is set to high, that is actually done, right? Um, there's current federal laws, for instance, on children. Um, we need to make sure that those things are not being violated. So some of that could be comported related to, to just, again, low hanging fruit that we would all agree on, as opposed to maybe what the actual definition of data or data deletion is. So what's the, What's the will of the group for this first work product of the group? I'd vote for uh, definitions or at least some common understanding of what those um, topics and um, sub issues are going to be. And it, it's interesting that we have um, large companies that are already bound by California laws. These are the companies that also have to play by GDPR rules. 
um, that don't, they, they have no willingness to accept in other states what they're already bound to in California. But I think if we start out with definitions, that makes it easier for all of us to kind of hub and spoke and start building out um, privacy laws that are in compliance nationally. Do we have uh, a general consensus on that being this first effort? Does anybody have any strong opposition or, or uh, uh, angst about doing that? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I think it's a good idea. Susan, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> Thought you were going to tell us something or say that I did something wrong, which is really could have applied this whole meeting so far. Anybody else? I'd like to if caveat not, but I, Go ahead. It's not an easy task. No. Not an easy task, but I think it's necessary. No, I, I think it's a good suggestion. And, I, and you know, it gives, us a, it gives us a place, to, uh, a, a common hymnal to sing from. Uh, we can build whatever we want to in our states based on, on uh, what we feel we need to do, based on what framework we already have in our various states. But I think having a, a common uh, foundation is at least understanding of, of, the, of the terms and of the issues, I think, is not a bad idea at all. Senator, another, suge Senator, another, suge ahead, another suggestion would be, and it's more of a, for an information perspective, what's the hesitation, because I still believe a national approach is the right answer. What's the hesitation either on the House or the Senate? And from a facts and data perspective, and also who are the ones that are standing in, who are the, op who's, who are the obstinate ones? Who are the ones that are standing in the way that need to have a conversation with to understand how to appreciate to get over the goal line or do something different? Well, Senator, I'll jump in here. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, this is Abby from NCSL's DC office, and we've been working on this, and I'm not telling our private sector friends anything they don't know, but we've been working on this um, for a while now, engaging in the House and Senate if they've put out their proposals over the last two years. Uh, and really the, the, the big opposition um, from the Senate and the House and the various caucuses have been at the high level twofold. One, a state preemption issue, primarily because California has such a strong congressional delegation that's been um, a real uh, wall for getting consensus on what a bill would look like. Most of the Republican bills, one was just put out a week and a half ago, the Safe Data Act from the Senate side um, are very strongly preemptive bills. There's also the argument there that um, some folks think that they're not going as, uh, they're not as protective of, of California. So they, they're worried that they are both preempting states and not providing uh, sufficient protection for consumers. And that's just one perspective. But there's also a lot of uh, conflict on the enforcement side, the private right of action versus other methods of enforcement, including uh, FTC jurisdiction. So. You know, Senator Wicker from the Senate side is really heading up all of the Senate Republican proposals out of the Senate Commerce Committee. I'd invite you to watch um, Wednesday's hearing on the need for future of federal data privacy legislation, as well as some of the hearings they've had this summer. On the House side, we've worked really closely with the Energy and Commerce Committee. They are a lot more in line with um, our perspective in terms of working more closely with states, but, you know, they also don't necessarily have as much leverage because they can't get any of the senators um, on board. So it's really been just a stalemate, honestly. And we, like I said, like the senator said, we encourage you to work with us uh, to sort of find ways that we can you know, get all of our, our federal partners on board. You know, this is one of those issues that NCSL normally is, is anti-state preemption on, on most things, but this is one of those issues that there's sort of a general consensus that it may be necessary for a federal proposal, but what we don't want is blanket state preemption with protections that states don't think are sufficient. So that's the, that's the goal. Abby, what Senate committee is that? Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation. Thank you. So yeah. Senator, maybe, maybe we have a follow-up meeting on this topic on November 4th and see what happens. <laughs> well, that's the other thing is, you know, things are gonna change very, very quickly here. Um, and I would also, I mentioned this to Senator Westerfield, but another option for this group, and obviously it's all, it's up to you all, 
We also can work on recommendations to Congress. If, if a national standard is something that, something that we support, then um, working on recommendations to how that can be done well is, is an option too. Well, it sounds like we've got, uh, for sure, this, this common glossary is our, is our first agreed upon uh, product for sure. Uh, and, and once we have that, that might actually do well to inform uh, some sort of uh, recommendation about general common policies for, that, for the Congress to consider. Do you all, does Abby, Susan, do you all need anything else for us on, on uh, marching orders there? No, what we'll do is um, we're gonna put together a summary of everything we've talked about. And now that we kind of have um, a direction on where we wanna go in terms of work products, we're gonna start reaching out to you all. I know you've got elections, but just keep an eye out for our emails. We're gonna try Get to- Lou. I, <laughs> <laughs> Except Lou, we're gonna, you can do all the work, Senator. <laughs> I'm going to Kentucky to <laughs> campaign for Senator Whitney. Yeah, you know we're gonna, we're obviously here to support you all, so we're going to try to do um, a lot of the research work for you. But uh, we want this to be your legislative product, so uh, look for our summary, and we'll start giving you some next steps. Thank I you, would Abby. Just, Go ahead. Can I add you. just one? Okay, so I just want to add one extra thing. You know, one of the most impactful things that we as an organization can do, representing all of you is to be able to go to key people on the Hill to say, you know, this is, a, this is a culmination of where the states stand on these issues and what the states feel would be appropriate. And I think, you know, it's really hard for federal folks to come back and say, well, that's not, you know, that doesn't indicate what my state wants when we have that data. So we're gonna rely on you guys to help us put that together so that we can be the best advocates for you all that we can be. And I'll just well add said. that. And I thank you, Susan. Thank you, Abby, uh, and thank you all, members, for the discussion. Uh, I want to. I'm going to wrap us up here and talk about some next steps for the work group uh, here at the top of the hour. We're we're winding down, so hang in there for another two or three minutes. Uh, the next meeting of the work group uh, is presently going to be in December, which will include programming. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the next meeting of the Cybersecurity Task Force will be in December, which will include programming on privacy issues. Uh, and right now we're looking at Thursday, December 3rd uh, for that meeting. Uh, we'd like to get your feedback on the timing for that, as well as what programming you'd like to see at future meetings. The sooner you get that feedback into to staff, the better. Uh, we also intend, intend to hold a full in-person meeting uh, as soon as that's possible, when that's possible, including potentially holding a pre-conference meeting at the summit next summer uh, and hosting a larger in-person meeting next fall as the situation permits. Uh, I invite, I know Assemblywoman Irwin invites uh, your suggestions on meeting timing and future programming. Anybody else have any feedback uh, here at the end there uh, on either timing or programming. If you don't want to offer it now, again, feel free to email uh, Assemblywoman Irwin, Senator Alexander, Abby, or Susan uh, at your leisure. Okay, that concludes our first business meeting. I appreciate everybody's attendance. I appreciate your engagement. Uh, I look forward to when we can all meet again, don't we all? Man. Less Zoom would be fantastic. Now, if you've got questions, uh, reach out to NCSL uh, Cyber Task Force staff, Pam, Abby, Susan, whose emails are in the chat and uh, are certainly in your inbox many times from other uh, correspondents. So feel free to grab those. They should be in your favorites list, everybody. Uh, thank you all for your time, uh, and I appreciate it. Godspeed to all those but Lou who are running hard for their reelections. I'm running hard. Thank for you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Abby, Susan, was that satisfactory? That was wonderful. You did a great job. We might just have you do all of the meetings from now on. <laughs> Bring it on. Appreciate it. Well, good luck with your race. We hope to see you back soon. And we appreciate your help. And I'm going to get you uh, information about what we are doing on the federal side and there were a couple yeah other please do too so Thanks. i will i will send that out thank you so much we appreciate it bye-bye
Good work, team. Thanks, Kevin.